what's up guys this is make them tech you welcome to my youtube channel i hope you guys have been enjoying our video tutorials today we want to look at creating a react app with webpack and babel from scratch i know that you guys are excited about this creating a react app with webpack and babel from scratch uh i know that there are many developers out there that are used to cra and that is create react app you know cra is beginners friendly you can easily bootstrap a react application with cra without wasting much time on setting up your uh, your bundling tools and go yes but there are some times that you might need to have control over your code you only want to have what you need um, probably you want to tweak and maybe extend the application to be able to do something and you might need to bring in webpack and babel and that is why this tutorial is out for you to be able to understand how to create a react app with webpack and babel from scratch so the first thing we want to look at is what is webpack webpack is a module bundler that takes all your javascript codes from the different javascript files and turn them to a single huge javascript file yes so when you want to install webpack you need to install webpack itself which is the engine the core itself then you install the webpack cli that is the uh, the module that helps you to interact with the command line interface for webpack and also the development server you install that one too this script is how you set it up so that if you want to run the command you only just do npm run start and it will start the webpack in a development mode then you do same for dev and for build we also have other uh, bundlers like a browser file you have that of gob and so on but webpack happens to be like the leading bundler we have out there which has been performing wonders in fact webpack has been very awesome in, in the use of um, as a build uh, react application and wonders we have babel too what's babel babel is a javascript that transforms es6 code to es5 code yes so you know when you are come for you are you are trying to transform from a higher level language or other higher level or within the same language you they normally call it transpilation it's also a form of compilation you are compiling from one source code to another but this time around we are not going to the low level like converting from a heavy a higher level language to a lower level like so it's just basically transpiling es6 is not supported by most browsers today there are many browsers today that are still much of es5 code so because of that you know and there are many features that we want to use in our es5 code, in our javascript code that are of es6 standards so with that you might need babel to be able to transpire your code to es5 code we have babel core which is the main engine we have babel loader that helps webpack to understand that oh this is your gsx uh, this is your uh, arrow functions this and cool then we have the preset environment this preset environment helps to determine which plugin or polyfills or whatever to use for a particular targeted browser so and then you know it brings those features together and then helps you to transpire them then we have the preset react that helps to transform or yes gsx to uh, javascript functions then we have that of so babel plugin proposal class properties you know it has to do it um in your class component if you want to use um arrow functions and probably you want to avoid constructor those stuffs you can just install your plugin proposal class properties and it's going to help to compile your arrow functions and the likes so we also have others if i we have a whole lot plugins we have the one for arrow functions we have so many that once you need them you can just bring them in one after the other and the ones that needs configuration you do that here this one is preset this is how you do for preset for plugin like proposal you also have another field and then you put it there the flow 
the flow. So how we're gonna go about this because I want to assure you in this tutorial we are building a React application with Webpack and Babel from scratch. And I'm telling you that by the end of this tutorial you would have fully understood how to go about this. The first thing we need to do is to install Babel. Then after which we install Webpack. The three things for Webpack we're going to install that. For Babel we're going to install the first four things and later we install the last one which is plugin uh, proposal class properties then we are going to install react we install react and react dom and then we set up our react folder and file uh, and file structure yes then after which we do our configurations the barbell loan and the web pack loan. then we put our scripts our command script inside our package.json and boom we are done then we write some little react application and then we test run it and then we'll have that so but basically i want to tell you that this is going to be the part one of this uh, video tutorial i was going to do the part two whereby you bring in other plugins and tweak your web app to do stuffs optimization and co so just watch out for that but in this tutorial we want to try and lay and i want to lay our hand on building a react application with web app and babel from scratch so follow me through as we embark on this journey yes so you create a folder you call it whatever you want to call it and then you begin on this node by putting npm in it dash y npm install save dev so that's we want to install a uh, barbell now that's the first thing we want to install and we're going to save it as a dev dependency so we have our barbell that's a um, core we have the barbell loader preset environment preset react So yes, we are done. The next thing to install is Webpack. Yes, I just want to use a short form of uh, installing a module. Just put your I and then the D as the dev dependencies. So we have Webpack, we have Webpack CLI, and we have Webpack Dev Server. Yes, so well, and the last is a React. So we are saving this as a dependency, and that's a React and React DOM. So we are done. Now, um, so let's check out what we've installed. Okay, so we are fine. We want to set up a React uh, application. I'm going to start by creating a folder. 
SRC. Then we need a build folder. A build folder. Okay, now inside our build folder, I'm going to create our index.html. Now we need to create an element with the ID app. This is going to contain our React application. We want to reference our bundle.js file. So the single huge file that Webpack is going to bundle is going to be dropped inside this build folder. And then we need to reference that JS file in our index.html file okay so we are we are okay so we need to create uh, two files inside src folder and that is our index.js and then the next one is our app.js so um, we want to import react from react then import react dom from react dom then the app.jsf i want to believe that we are familiar with uh, react so the app.js is more like our uh, our parent component or uh, in institution by you have more than one component so all other components will be under app.js so app.js is going to to be serving as the parent component for other components so another components too can be parent to another component but this is just going to be like the should i permit me to use the word overall parent for all other components but here now we are only dealing with just a single file a single component and that's just app.js so we need to import it here app from as it So this accepts two arguments so the index.html we already have an element there so we render this component app into that element and that element has the id called app so with this we have been able to set up our react application so only the only thing that is left for us is to write our react application a small code that we'll just test and then we see building works so we we want to proceed to configure babel now uh i told you about this file called babel rc so this babel rc is just like you are writing your uh, json code so you bring in those Babel uh, modules just to the environment and the react uh, that's preset environment that's env
the next thing we are going to configure is our webpack webpack dot config dot js okay so um uh, webpack dot js now i have some information for us so i want us to be aware of these facts one i want you to know that webpack is going to use this file to bundle your javascript code this file we are going to put some instructions there and webpack is going to leverage on those instructions to bundle your javascript codes um yeah and probably you have your file you have other files and, and all that you want webpack to do or whatever that you'll be using in your code you have to pass them here as an instruction and webpack is going to do justice to it then another thing i want us to know is that you know this application is more like a node application we are going node now and here now we'll be writing we'll be bringing in some okay okay today where i'm just going to use the part module here so because we have access to node modules here so and i don't want that one to be string to us and then we cannot write ESC code here because even we need babel to come to transpile our ESC code in our react application to es5 so we'll be writing basically es5 and then node codes here i'm starting with parts i need parts to be able to reference my directories uh, that is required for those of us that are familiar with node i want to believe that this should not be strange and then we have module dot exports so this is how to export your module in uh, es5 and then um, and this is how okay yes es5 and then let me say uh, in node most people that have been writing middlewares and modules in node already knows about this uh now i want to write out six things then when i'm done i will explain each of them now we have like six properties here and these six properties are very germane to webpack so i don't forget we are going to be passing some instructions here and this entry means the entry point of your application yes it means the entry point of your application and then i want you to note this about your webpack.config.js it's more like you are trying to write some code around data structure in the sense that when the value you are passing is just a single value you just pass it as a string and if it's a, maybe there are more than one thing that you want to pass as a value you put it in an array and if peradventure you want to be detailed about each value that you are passing then why not just slam the object uh, javascript object on it and use it in your configuration so the configuration is just around rejects strings arrays and then objects so here now the entry point of my application is my index.js and that is in the source folder here so i can just put my path.join to reference that index.js okay so i'm fine with that so the next thing is the output the output is where okay the output spelling is wrong output yes so now when webpack has bonded your file you need to instruct webpack the location where that bonded file is to be dropped and that is our build folder so how do we do that we need to pass the path directory to that folder and then we need to tell webpack that i want the name of the bundle uh, the single huge bundled file to be bundled to a bundle yes and then if there is need for you to pass a public path maybe you want to reference a particular maybe when the bundle has been when the file has been bundled you want to 
maybe put the file in next to the bucket or something the directory to where your bundle file is going to be located needs to also be passed here so we need an object here and we're starting with the path field that is the path property that's path.join so in case of public path if you need the public path so we put for example now let's say maybe i am the bundle.js file that is going to be the output single huge file of webpack is going to be dropped in a in a in a different directory apart from what is here so i, I can put it here and just stipulate it here like this and then when let's say we are using a, a, a an html template yeah so we need a particular plugin for that so the by the time the plugin is done, then the the the, the part that you've passed here as a public part is be written in your index.html yeah so the file name now bundle.js The module is, you know, I want you to know that Webpack only understands JavaScript <laughs> and even to be specific, ES5 JavaScript. Anything beyond that, you need a loader. In fact, you need some set of rules to be passed here for Webpack to be able to bundle your files. So when you talk about CSS files, you talk about SAS files, you talk about images, you talk about uh, videos, whatever that you'll be using your application you need a loader for each file and then you need to pass the rule here so that webpack can use that rule to to bundle your code now we have um dot gs and gsx in our dot gs file it's possible we have um esc code isn't it we also have gsx for gsx that means it's something to load it and help us bundle it uh, we need something to to load that and that is the babel loader now we need to put our rules in an array so we have a test so we say test we bring in a rejects here Now we need to tell Webpack to exclude node modules from this. So because we want to load use Babel loader. Now as I was saying, we want to use Babel loader to load any file that ends with .js or dot gsx that is any file with the extension name .js or .gsx so .gx now .gsx webpack does not understand that and to be able to bundle any code written inside this file the babel loader needs to to load them in a string format and pass it to webpack and then .gs2 can contain our esc code and there is need for Babel loader to also load that for us. And you know Babel loader is working in conjunction with Babel core, Babel preset environment, and Babel preset React. So we are done with that. Let's move to resolve. Extension. Extensions. Digest the gsx mm, in this chamber maybe you have other files so this one is to instruct webpack that if you con if you meet if you encounter any file ending with the gs or the gs in our imports you know we import dependencies we import from here to here now so just resolve it and let it be like this so otherwise you'll be having error when you are building your your application then for plugins okay let's put that because we can have more than one plugin so then we have a dev server let's leave it like this uh, oh sorry okay yes i know okay 
so I think we are fine now so now let's move to package.json so let's put our our commands here start then we have for build that is web pack for production a web pack in production mode rather then the last one <coughs> is to engage our webpack development server we want to be able to open it on the fly okay so we are good to go let's go to app.js now let's write a small react application I'm going to write um let's first of all deal with um functional components so return say h1 let's say web pack um babel setup for that up so let's just put this small text here again on um, what that would that be i am enjoying this tutorial okay so let's export it oh there's an error okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i hope you guys still remember the rule of um gsx um, <clears throat> So export default app. So this is fine. We are fine. We are fine. So now a, a small recap of what we've done so far. We started on this note by installing our dependencies. We started by install. We proceeded to install Webpack this day, and then which is the <coughs> proceeded to. Uh, set up our React folders and uh, React folder. There's only one folder source. I hope that is our source folder and our build folder, and then the various files that we have inside. Then we created an index.html file. We, that's what we have here. Then we we wrote this code inside our index.js that will render our app component into the DOM. That is the app car the development carrying the app id then we have the app.js itself we've just written this code now and then we proceeded also to configure babel and that's it here then we went ahead to configure our webpack.config.js so this is what we have now let's start our application so the first thing we're going to do is to run it in the development mode using webpack itself not webpack development server so Let's do npm start. Let's see the results. npm start. Okay, so we are done. Yes, this bundle.js so we can see the size the file size yeah so if you look at our build folder here you can see that we have a new file inside that's bundle.js so um, now if you have a server you can run it with any server just run your build just serve your build folder <laughs> like a, should I use the word CDN and then you have it up so but here and I'm just going to use the VS code server let me use the VS Code server. Let's see the results. So we want to open it. Yo, 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 yo. So wow, this is it. So we can see the text here, but nothing is showing. Nothing is showing. Nothing is showing. Okay. 
nothing is showing not showing nothing is showing uh, I'll opening the development tool so we can see how we are referencing so the issue is that okay <coughs> the issue is that referencing it like this that is slash pondu so we need to adjust that let's go to our index here so let's add build to it because it's picking it directly from outside so it's running it as a whole okay so let's look at it again whoa congratulations so we have webpack and babel set up for react i'm enjoying this tutorial very easy to do then let's do that of production let's also test um npm run build Now check out the file size, 120. You can you see that it has reduced? So the code has been optimized, and you know this is production. Then you still have the same results if you are serving it. Yeah. Okay. So now with this, at least we've been able to achieve something. Okay. Let's test our own web development server because you can be shutting down your. <laughs> you can't be rebuilding all the time rather you know you, you 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 make a change you have to go and build again because web server has a kind of auto reload that once you make a change you're going to have the the reflection of that change immediately it's going to recompile and then you have it so let's delete this okay delete i want to delete okay so then i will change this back because our web pack server is going to be picking it as a server directly here mm -hmm. not like that so i'm just i just tested it with the vs code server so now for us to be able to uh, use our webpack development server we need to instruct our webpack <laughs> there's a few there called dev server so we can come here and put content base and then we use we reference that part that our build folder So we have it here now so i can run the code and then let's see the results npm run dev again um okay so wow let me close this other one we are done with you so now uh, by default web development server runs on port 8080 if you want to change you can still put your ports uh, field here and just reference your post straight you can also do it from the um, command script now let me make a change let's see what happens on the fly okay if i do like this button let me add the button to this button okay and i just say click let's say click me if i save can you see now it has compiled and then can see the change here okay so and um, then let's try to okay in this by let's write a uh what's it called a class component that's class app extends i know some of us are used to this but you know hooks is gaining uh, more grants these days and um what else so render so return okay let me just carry the whole thing here and let's drop it here i hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial it's like it's a long tutorial But the most important thing is just to understand how this thing works uh, okay so if i 
if I still lose, okay, let's check it out. Yes, we are still having the same thing. Let's create a, the, let's try to add state. That's okay, constructor. Okay, props. Super. This, that's, let's say state. No, this is state. It's got to, what do we have? Let's say title. Let's put the title. Okay, so let's write something that is going to change it for us. This dot undo click me. So I'm trying to be fast so that we can quickly end this tutorial. We are definitely going to have the part two of this tutorial. So we'll talk more about how to configure your webpack to do more things. So we bring in our on click event here on click this dot undo click me so the undo click me itself too we need to write it you have to write the function here so this dot set state so you see title is got to you what should we call the title Let's just say video tutorial on, on webpack stroke Babel setup for React. Okay, I'm just wondering that this thing is not working. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. It's like, why is this thing not changing? State dot type to yeah. So we put our default type to here. Okay, so still have it here. Boom. So let me change it now. Video tutorial and webpack setup for React. Okay, so and um, let's say let me just comment this out because doing this in this hour today it looks somehow it looks somehow it looks somehow why can't I just do like this state state is called to I just tie to tie to then what did we call that in it no okay so something like this mm -hmm. and then bring in my arrow function and that's a uh, what undo click me why do should i be using this everywhere in my code Okay, so at least this is a very cool something. Now, fail to comply. What's the problem? Can you see here now? This is the problem. So, what do we need to do? We need to install. So, we need to install that plugin. So, npm i d dash d at Babel plugin pro. Posa, proposa class properties and that's it
yeah find one high severity vulnerability so npm or dit fix yeah so now if we run it again we're going to have error so we have to configure the plugin here plugins yeah so we bring in our at babel dash plugin dash proposal the properties properties oh this is not class properties okay think about plugin proposal class properties so with this now we are free to use our arrow and then we can declare our states without using constructor and what have you so npm run dev let's see what we have boom nice so let's see still working so this is it so like i told you guys yeah that you webpack and babel for your react as in doing it from scratch is as simple as anything it's not a big deal and that's what we just don't we just conquered something big at the <laughs> so how should we put it so basically what we've done is we've done a the part one of how to set up webpack and babel for react application so i want you guys to await and even anticipate the next release which is going to be the part two of this video there we'll be talking about the html plugin for your templates your html templates uh we're talking about our css uh, loader how to bring in css and cool and even with this one let me even do it here now with this one you can still write your your style component here to still work but if you're having a css folder somewhere and you are importing it here you will not be able to get your results because your web app does not know anything dot css except you pass in the loader to uh, use to load it now let's say we have let button star it's got to so let me say i have um what should i just let's say background let's call it background and then let's call it um ash one two three four eighty um let's call it border border radius and that's a 0.4 em and then let's see border 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 itself as 1px solid um as 1 2 3 4 80 and then let's say the width is um 110 px and then we have again um padding yeah the padding is very very important padding let us give it 10 px so we can then come here and just use our style here to work because this is style component um no yeah so button star so let's see what we have now and see it here so it will work so we have finally come to the end of the tutorial and with this you can lay your hand on on um react application you can start moving away from cra and start taking control of your react application it's very easy and you don't have any problem so like i said as you anticipate our next tutorial which is going to be the part two of this uh react uh, application using uh, setting up uh, creating the react application in react uh, webpack and uh, babel so uh, uh guys please subscribe to my youtube channel we want, i want us to grow this channel together so you guys should subscribe turn on the notification bell so that whenever we drop a new video you can get notified so thank you i will see you in my next video